This video is to go over sliding filament theory. Sliding filament theory is our understanding of how muscles contract. Um, it's pretty complex, so I'm going to start by going through the different proteins and other molecules that are involved, um, and then we'll talk about the actual process. So when we're talking about sliding filament theory, the major players are myosin and actin, the thick and thin filaments. Um, tropomyosin and troponin, two other proteins that are also part of the thin filament, are kind of secondary players. Um, and then we have ATP, uh, which we all remember from uh, 107 as cellular energy. And then we have calcium ions, charged atoms of calcium. Um, so I'm going to go through each one. We're going to talk about the structure and the function for each. We'll start with myosin. Myosin is the thick filament. Um, and myosin has this unique structure. Um, it has this long tail with a hinge in the middle, and then it has two heads um, with another hinge. Okay. Um, and so this allows it to change shape or conformation. Conformation is just a fancy way of saying shape um, that we use when we're talking about different shapes of molecules. So myosin has a low energy state and a high energy state. The low energy state is bent um, both at the tail and at the head. And the high energy state is kind of straight out. You'll notice that in the high energy state, we have an ADP and a phosphate here. And that's because ATP has transferred its energy to the myosin heads. Um, these myosin heads, it's important to know, are also called cross bridges because they form the bridges between the myosin and the actin. Okay. Uh, at all times, these cross bridges or heads want to grab on to actin, um, but they can only reach the actin when they're straight out like this. Okay, we're going to go through this a uh, few more different ways as we go through this video. But just remember, this is the low energy state of myosin, and this is the high energy state of myosin. And myosin needs to be in its high energy state in order to grab onto actin. Um, a little bit more about the structure of myosin. There are two binding sites on myosin. There's one binding site that's specific for actin, and there's one binding site that's specific for ATP. And Myosin will have either ATP or actin bound to it um, at various stages of the myosin cycle. So here is the, an illustration of the myosin cycle. And so we're going to start with myosin in its low energy state. No ATP or actin are bound to it. ATP eventually will float around and bump into the ATP binding site. Um, this is still myosin in a low energy state. You see that the, there's still that bend in the tail. And it's low energy because the energy is still in ATP. ATP has to go through hydrolysis. Remember, hydro is adding water. Lysis is breaking a bond. Um, and so we're going to break the bond between the second and third phosphates of ATP. And that bond energy is going to be transferred to the cross bridges of myosin. So hydrolysis occurs between here and here. And we see what we're left with is ADP, a phosphate group, and these energized cross bridge heads, um, and myosin in its high energy state. Okay. It's going to make contact with actin. It's going to reach up and grab onto that actin. Um, and once it's done that, the ADP and the phosphate are going to be released. 
Um, and myosin is going to go back to its low energy state. Okay, so again, we have the low energy myosin, ATP binds, that ATP is going to go through hydrolysis, and here is where myosin is now in that high energy state. The high energy myosin is going to bend, grab onto that actin, that ADP and phosphate are going to be released. There's a thing called the power stroke, and that's when the actin and myosin interact, shortening the sarcomere. Um, and then myosin is going to go back to its low energy state. So that is the thick filament. Let's now go to the thin filament. The thin filament is made of three proteins. We often just talk about the thin filament as being actin. Um, and the actin here is one strand of actin. Here's another strand of actin. Um, each of these is called an actin subunit. They look kind of like blueberries in this illustration. And so the actin is what the myosin binds to. But there are two other really important molecules. There's tropomyosin and troponin. So we'll go through each of these. We'll start with actin. Actin, again, is double-stranded. Um, and the subunits have myosin binding sites. Let me remove that so you can see the notes properly. Okay, so double-stranded, and we see myosin binding sites. Those myosin binding sites, however, are covered by tropomyosin. So tropomyosin are these long strings that cover those myosin binding sites. And so tropomyosin is a regulatory protein. It prevents interaction between actin and myosin unless certain conditions are met. Met, And those conditions are troponin being unlocked with calcium. So troponin is along the tropomyosin strand and it can be unlocked with a calcium ion. So what happens is the calcium is released by the terminal cisternae. That calcium is eventually going to interact with the troponin. When calcium binds to the troponin, it changes the shape or the orientation of the tropomyosin, revealing these myosin binding sites that are covered up right now by that tropomyosin. So let's go through the calcium ion job again. Um, when a muscle gets the signal to contract, when it gets an action potential from a motor neuron to the muscle, that action potential is going to travel down the muscle cell and trigger the release of calcium ions from the terminal cisternae. And the terminal cisternae are just those wide ends of sarcoplasmic reticulum. Those calcium ions are going to bind to troponin. And when those calcium ions bind to troponin, it's like a lock and key. The calcium ions have shifted the troponin so that the tropomyosin is able to move away from the myosin binding site. Um, that it's been covering. So once this happens, we're going to have what's called the power stroke. Um, before we get into that, I want to look a little bit at what it looks like when myosin binds to actin. So here is that high energy myosin binding to actin. And we say that the ADP and the phosphate group still are attached. When those myosin heads bind to the actin, they grab on and pull the Z discs or the Z lines towards the center of the sarcomere. So here we have the Z discs, and they're going to be pulled 
towards the center of the circle mirror. And so when that happens, it shortens the circle mirror. See, we can see that they have gotten closer together. Okay, so going through what happens molecularly, we're going to go back, see this. Here's the myosin grabbing onto the actin. Um, once that happens, this ADP and phosphate are going to fall off. And when they fall off, that's what causes that, that shortening of the sarcomere, that power stroke. Okay. So we'll go through that one more time, kind of looking at a different angle. So the cross bridge cycle again. So here's the myosin with the ADP and the phosphate attached. It's a high energy molecule. We see the calcium ions floating through the cytosol. Okay. Those calcium ions are eventually going to bind to troponin and that's going to cause tropomyosin to move over show and reveal all these myosin binding sites. Once those myosin binding sites are revealed, the myosin is going to bind to the actin. Okay. Um, and from here, we're going to lose that ADP and phosphate, which allow the power stroke to occur, that shortening of the sarcomere. Floating around in the cytosol will be some more ATP. That ATP is going to bind here. And once ATP binds here, it's going to let go of actin. It's going to kind of go back down. It's low energy state. And it's going to stay low energy until that ATP undergoes hydrolysis. And remember, hydrolysis breaks the second, the bond between the second and third phosphate group. That bond energy is going to be transferred to myosin and the cycle can repeat itself. I hope me guiding you through um, this series of slides is helpful for your understanding of sliding filament theory.